Well, we got here today in Milltown Cemetery. On this is the 80th anniversary of the execution or brutal murder of Joe McKelvey and his three comrades, Rory O'Connor, Liam Mellows, and Richard Barrett, better known as the Four Martyrs. It was a particularly murderous act that they carried out, the Free State Forces did, uh, on, on the four, our four comrades. And today I think is very fitting that after 90 years we are still here at his graveside commemorating him. And uh, it should be a good it should be a good day. So on behalf of the Anderson Town Historical Society, I'd like to welcome you here today for the 90th anniversary of the murder of the four martyrs, Liam Mallows, Rory O'Connor, Richard Barrett and Joe McKelvey, our own Joe McKelvey. By all accounts, this murder was one of the worst atrocities carried out by the Free State Forces against Republicans. In both the way it was carried out, the way it was done, and the way the brave volunteers were selected for, for their brutal murder. But I know you'll be hearing a lot more about that in a minute, so we will move on. I know Jimmy has a lot to say about that. We have a few wreaths here to be laid out today, and we'd like to do that first. So, on behalf of the first wreath, we had on behalf of the uh, Republican movement of Nina Hearn in Belfast. The Belfast National Graves Association. Donovan Ross of GAC. Anderson's Town Historical Society. The Roddy McCarty Society. And the PD Club. I'd like to ask you to observe a minute's silence and uh, during which the flags will be lowered. And if everyone could just spur a thought for every man, woman and child who have given their lives in the cause of Irish freedom. Just to move on, uh, our guest speaker today, he, he is all known, he, knows no, he doesn't need any um, introduction from me, except to say that he's been a very, very good friend to all Republican branches in, within Belfast, and any time we wanted him, we, he's always been there for us any time. So please welcome Jimmy McDermott. Very good of everybody to come. I notice it's very, very cold. Some people are obviously very cold. I'll be as brief as I can. If you'll excuse me, I'll just look at the time. I'll be finished, I hope, in just over 10 minutes. I'll try and keep an eye on it. I think it's true to say that life is lived forward and it's understood backwards. And when you're looking at the history of the Republican movement, there are times when large lapses of, of time goes by before you get a true picture of what actually happened. 
In the last 10 years, there, have, there has been a wealth of information which heretofore had not been available, which we can now examine and find out with some accuracy as to what actually happened in the turbulent time of 1918-23. The character of Joe McKelvey is an extremely interesting one at all times. Long regarded from what they already knew of him as a very brave man, as a very decent man, as a much loved man by all who knew him, and without lapsing into hagiography, a man who was regarded well by all elements in all sides in the Republican movement. It is only now that we can get a clearer idea of what he was prepared to sacrifice. As I say, I'll be brief. He was born in Stewartstown, the son of a policeman, Patrick McKelvey. His mother was Rose McKelvey, who was a postmistress. His father had served briefly in Leitrim and Tyrone before moving to Springfield Barracks, where he attained the rank of sergeant. They moved back to Belfast when the father lost his arm, returning to Belfast again only in 1915. But Joe McKelvey could be characterised in the words of my, my own mother, or most of our own mothers, as a very genuine person, committed. Now, I, mean, I don't mean of that period he was the, necessarily the most gifted gunman or the most intellectual. But in terms of being dedicated, I think the record speaks for itself. And I think it's about time to set the record straight as to a couple of revisionist books about it. People who didn't know the full workings of the Republican movement in the 20s have tended to ascribe a role to, a role to Joe McKelvey which is unfair. Uh, 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 one of the military records, I'll not give you his name, but certainly is a very active gunman. He regarded Joe McKelvey, he said, as a great fellow, lovely fellow. Everybody seems to say that. He says like, and it, it's, his murder will stain the pages of Irish history. And he called it murder, which it was. And he said that the collusion of things like the Catholic Church was disgraceful, which fair enough it was. But he himself, remember he took a pro-treaty lane, as many Belfast men did, the man I'm talking about. He said that Joe was characterised by having a lack of initiative. He thought too much about things. And he didn't, and he, and he tended to consult too many people and be easily swayed. Well, hell in the balance, I think the problem was that the particular person didn't know just how much was in Joe McCabe's plate. From 1916, emerging, uh, emerging from the FEMA, he was in rapid order, a section leader in B Company, an OC of A Company, a quartermaster of the 1st Battalion of the IRA, an OC of the 1st of, of the first Battalion of the IRA, and the 1st Divisional. OC of the 3rd Northern Division. Now, this man said, very, very good officer, very good soldier. She was kind of like the man is, a good man, but he said that like, it's, it's his attachment to the IRB got his promotion. In fact, no. Joe McKelvey, throughout his career, demonstrated an absolute commitment, a willingness to get things wrong, as most Republicans do at some stage, but then try again to get it right. Right from 1918, he is heavily involved in arming, getting organised the IRA itself. The IRA, first IRA actions in Belfast, he is part of it. In the Cross Guard raid of, 19, of February 19, 1920, it is Joe McKelvey's command officer. In the Scottish Provident, the burning of the income tax offices, which hopped in concert with all over Ireland. And by the way, they only burned the papers, not the Scottish Provident building, which is still standing. It is Joe McCarvey, Seamus Woods, and Sean McConville who are there. In 1917, he is seen gathered at the Pavilion in Croke Park at the first big volunteer convention of that year with the people like Cockle Brewer, Michael Collins, Terence McSweeney, Dick McKee. Name them. They were there. He knew them. In the truce period, uh, it's recorded that uh, Francis Davis, the Longford treasurer of the Northern Command, 
when Joe McKelvey was the agent of Frank Aiken, recalls him having a conversation. It is he and McKelvey who, if the truce breaks down, are expected to go to London to kill the British cabinet and blow up the House of, House of Parliament. This is a man who will take on anything. This is a man who has the, a sincere concern for the welfare of his people. Very, very worried that uh, the nationalist population will be slaughtered in 1920 after the shipyard expulsions, should the IRA be too proactive, but later moves to a very proactive role himself, constantly taking weapons. Uh, Tom McNally's memoir of swapping five Lewis guns for five Thompson guns. He comes up from the GNR, he is met right away by Joe McKelvey. An active service unit destroy, shoot a, dead, a couple of beast bashes down Ruddy's Hotel in Oxford Street. Who's the covering party in Kuwait? Joe McKelvey. Very, very, very active man. But meets his death. His death at the hands of people who could not be accused of lacking initiative because he, Dick Barrett, Liam Mellows and Rory O'Connor were shot dead within 24 hours. No lack of initiative there. They were shot dead not after long consultations with anybody. It was a cabinet decision taken very, very quickly to execute four people who were not present at the shooting of the TD Sean Hills for which the revenge killing was made. It was to stay in Irish history forever and it marks the lack of thought which would have characterised Joe McKelvey, a man who in April 1922, along with Charlie Daly, another anti-treaty leader from Derry, had taken great, great steps to try to ensure there would be no split in the Republican movement. Their death, judicial murder that it was, rent open the Republican movement in many ways. But let's spare a thought for the people directly connected to Republican activists. His mother, Rose McKelvey, already very, very emotionally disturbed because of Joe's involvement. He was an only son, was to die soon afterwards. His fiancée, Cassie O'Hara, refused to take the oath of allegiance in her job at Milford Street School, ended up owning a small shop, ended up O.C. in Armagh jail of the women prisoners and died soon afterwards. One of the excuses given for his death was given by a friend, with Beth, uh, Kevin O'Higgins, one time friend of his, Rory O'Connor, to his best man in his wedding. And he used the exotic Latin phrase, Sal uh, salus populi extreme lex, which means, in times of strife, the, 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 the importance, the people are paramount. Basically, that's the translation. But the people never asked for Joe McKelvey to be killed. Revenge killings on a newly elected government on a man not yet 24 years old, by a government not even a year in existence, gives little hope of democracy in Ireland. It gives little hope that an elected government in 26 counties would want to see play for fair play in the south. The very fair, fair play in the north, I beg your pardon. The very reason why Joe McKelvey left. He could have stayed. He could have joined the Free State Government, many did. He was received a very good wages as a battalion officer, four pound ten shilling a week. He could have married his fiancée, he could have done, got a desk job, and he could have been regarded as a hero. The fact that he gave all those things up on a point of principle is a shining example to anybody involved in the Republican movement today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Johnny. I think everybody will agree that was a very informative lecture. Um, the one crowd I forgot to, to, to thank today, and it's absolutely fantastic to see them here. Please have a big round of applause for O'Donovan Ross and Pete. That concludes today's meeting, our, our assembly. I'll ask the uh, Guard of Honour now to be dismissed. Guard of Brothers, Scalpagate! Guard of Mila Mayor,